In this video, I will walk you through some of the sculpting changes in Blender 2.8 compared to earlier versions. I'll also answer some of your questions you guys have been asking me on the channel on sculpting in Blender 2.8 and the sculpting course that I have on my Gumroad at the end of the video, so make sure you get to that part. I have a beginner tutorial on sculpting in Blender for beginners on my channel that I'll add in a link in the description below. I want you to watch that video first to be able to properly follow this one, especially if you've never sculpted before. Now, if for some reason you've missed my last two uploads, one which was Blender 2.8 8 and why it will be a game changer, a look at it, and the second video which is a time lapse of Batman's creation in Blender 2.8, then you're missing out, so I'll add the links in the description below. Check these videos out first, then come back here and you'll be set. Enjoy! To download Blender 2.8, make sure you go to blender.org. Now, if over here it's 2.79 and not 2.8, it means that the official release is not out yet. So what you can do is go to download, go down over here, latest experimental builds, click on that. And this is basically updated every single day. So just go down over here for me, it's Windows 64 bits, Blender 2.8, just click on this, it'll download it, and then you extract the zip and you'll be good to go. Okay, so once you open Blender 2.8, it'll look something similar to this. Now it might be a bit different for you if you're working on a different version, such as the beta or the stable version. But anyways, when you're working with an experimental build, always make sure that you go to file and load factory settings to make sure that all of the new changes are applied. So once you do that, There'll be a small change over here, basically because the workspace changed to the layout instead of the modeling. So I'm going to go back to modeling over here so that it looks like it did. And here's the first thing that changed from Blender 2.79. In 2.79, the user preferences is in file. Now you can find it in edit. So click on this so that you can activate in the input the emulate 3 button mouse, which I basically explained on my other video in sculpting in Blender for beginners. So again, I'll add it in a link in the description below. So make sure you check it out first and then come back to this video. So make sure you activate it and make sure that you select with the right mouse button so that it works properly. And once you do that, you save the user settings so that you can navigate with your tablet. Okay, just a quick recap. For the tablet navigation, you can use the Alt button and the pen to basically rotate the Alt, Control, and the Pen to zoom in and out, the Alt, Shift, and the Pen to pan in the viewport. A little new change over here is basically these icons right here. So if you click on the X, for example, it will snap to this view. You can click on the Z to snap to the top view. Now that can be quite useful, but to be honest, I usually do it with my tablet. So basically, if you're rotating with the Alt, if you hit Alt again while rotating, it snaps to the view. One of the really cool things about Blender 2.8 is the new workspaces on the top. These will allow for a more efficient workflow. So for example, if you click on sculpting, you will notice a few changes over here. For example, the matte cap is already applied. We are already in the sculpt mode instead of the object mode and other stuff like that. Now yours might be a bit different, but don't worry about that because we will be changing this to our own liking. So let's take a look over here and see what's new. First things first, on the top, we have the tool settings, which we didn't have in Blender 2.79. These are basically the same settings that we got over here, or maybe in your case, right over here. So that means that if you have this on the left, we don't really need it because we have it both on the top and on the right. Now to remove this, unlike Blender 2.79, where we hit the T button to remove it, you can see now that that only affects the tool shelf over here, which is also new. So to remove it, this is basically just part of the properties bar right now. So the same as over here. So it's just a new icon, which means that this is only a Blender window. To get rid of it, right click on this line, join area, click on the left and you're good to go. Now we have more space. Before I do any further changes, I'm going to show you how to duplicate this current workspace and create your own. You can right click sculpting over here, hit duplicate, control and click the new one, and then you can name it to whatever you want. So for example, Ian Sculpts. So now I'm going to make changes to this new one. I'm going to switch back from object mode to sculpt mode, and then I will split the window so that I can see my sculpt in different views. To do so, you just click on the line over here, the black one. So right click, split area, and then you get a horizontal line. Now you can switch this to a vertical one by using the tab button. There you go. And then I will cut it right over here. Now we have a different window. 
I'm going to create another one. So right click, split area, and there you go. So for example, over here, we can put the sculpt in this view and maybe this one in the front view, and we'll be using the right one to sculpt. So now I want to get rid of all of these extra stuff. To do so, I'm gonna hit the T button on this window, this window as well. And to get rid of all of the gizmos and everything over here, you can just hit this button over here. So there you go, and there you go. At this point, you can even further personalize your workspace as much as you want. So if you go to the top over here and with the middle mouse button, you can scroll, you can change the shading matte cap to a different one for this window and a different one, for example, for this one. Once you're happy with all of the changes, you can, for example, zoom in over here so that it always starts this way. You can go back to modeling if you want, go to file and then save startup file, click OK. And this basically means that every time you create a new Blender file, so control N general, you basically don't lose this new workspace. So I sculpted Batman in Blender 2.8 to test it out, and it was a pretty awesome experience. In fact, I have a full time lapse of the creation of this character with the texturing, lighting, real time rendering, and everything on the channel. I'll add a link in the description below. It's pretty cool, so go check it out. Anyways, I'm gonna use him to basically demonstrate everything up over here. If you go up to shading over here and click on it, you'll notice a lot of cool new options. So, first things first, you can play around with the lighting type. So, you can go, for example, to flat and to better see flat you can activate some of the options over here such as cavity outline shadow specular highlights but we'll talk about that in a second you can also go to studio and matte cap now this is the one you're gonna be using the most when sculpting because that's where you best see your model and the shapes of your object anyways moving on you can click on the sphere to check out the other new matte caps which are all a lot better than the ones we had in blender 2.79 I usually use this one for sculpting, but you can try other ones as well. Over here in the color section, you can go single and play around with the value and the color of the matte cap, which we couldn't do before. You can also go to random, which is really cool if you have a lot of different objects over here, so you can easily differentiate between them. Let me just go back right here and you can go to material. So material is basically if I select an object and create a new material, you can go down to viewport display and change the diffuse color over here, which will only affect what it looks like in the viewports. Moving on, you can activate outline. So outline will be a bit easier to see if we go to flat over here. So if I remove it, take a good look at the edges and I add it again, you can see that it adds some outline to the objects. Next, let me just go back to matcap. You can also add cavity. So this will act a bit like ambient occlusion, but a better version because it will also add highlights to the edges of the object. So if I go to single over here and activate cavity, I can play around with the ridge for the highlight. So I can increase it and decrease it as you can see. So it will affect the highlights on the edges of the character. You can also play around with the value for the shadows. And last but not least, you can click on this option over here and play around with the samples, distance and attenuation. So just play around with it to see what kind of look you want to go for. But the default values work pretty well. You can also play around with the specular highlights that works with the studio and the flat lighting over here, but not the matte cap. And you can also add shadow, which Kind of looks cool, but if you want to sculpt, you either want to put this down so it does not really affect the shapes too much, or just don't use it over here, but you can, let's see, go to the left and just add it over here for a better look. One last thing I want to talk about before we go to the brushes and the hotkeys is the overlays. So this is a new thing in Blender 2.8 where you can select what you see in the viewport and what you don't. So for example, we can get rid of the 3D cursor, the origins, which was really annoying in Blender 2.79, and you can check out all of these other options. If you want to get rid of everything at the same time, you can always click on this icon over here. In Blender 2.8, to switch from object mode to sculpt mode, you can do so up over here. So sculpt mode, in object mode and the other method is by using the control tab button to activate the pie menu and once you do that you can either select the numbers so number four for object mode and two for sculpt mode or you can actually click on the sculpt mode and the last option is actually just doing it fast so 
control tab and then just go to object mode and it will do it automatically. So if I do it again, object mode, sculpt mode. And at this point, I am not clicking on it, I'm just hovering. Okay, so it's time to talk about the brushes and their hotkeys. Over here, you're going to notice a new tool shelf. You can remove it by using the T button and hitting the T button again to get it back. So these brushes are basically the same thing that you see over here. Now I don't really use it that much because you're going to notice there's a small sign in these brushes over here that if you keep on clicking on it, it will expand and it will show you different type of brushes, which could be annoying when you're working really fast because you'll have to remember which brush goes where, even though they're kind of related. Over here, you kind of see everything at once. Anyways, when you're sculpting, it's best that you remember the hotkeys so that you can sculpt as fast as possible. This leads me to the shortcuts. Now, I'm not going to exactly tell you what each shortcut is because I really don't think this is the final version since it really does not make sense. But if you hover over any of the brushes, as you can see over here, it will tell you which shortcut it is. Also, you can hit the spacebar and you'll find a set of brushes over here. Anyways, they don't make sense. The numbers don't work like they did in Blender 2.79. So what I personally do is I right click on the brush. So for example, I think number three in Blender 2.79 was clay strips, which I use a lot. So I just right click on this, assign shortcut number three. And now if I hover over it again, you're going to notice that the shortcut is three. If you want these changes to stick, you have to go to edit user preferences, pull this down and you have to save user settings. If you don't do that, these shortcuts will go away once you open Blender again. I think it's also worth mentioning that some of the shortcuts might not work properly. So for example, the grab brush, if you hit a G, it goes to grab and you hit it again, it goes to thumb and now it's just thumb. Even if I go back to G and I assign the shortcut, so I change it to G and I hit G again, it goes back to thumb. This happens with one or two brushes. I think it happens with the pinch brush as well, with the P button. So instead, just change the shortcut for now until they fix this bug. So change shortcuts. I put it at one and whatever really suits you basically. Just choose the brushes you use the most, add the shortcuts you want. And once the official release comes, we'll see how the new shortcuts will affect our sculpting. While we are still talking about shortcuts, a really cool thing you can do in Blender 2.8 is right click on anything. So for example, you can right click the sculpt, add to quick favorites. You can also right click one of the brushes. So the layer, add to quick favorites. And once you do that, you can use the Q button on your keyboard to access all of these favorites. If you don't want them anymore, you can right click on any and each one of them and basically remove from quick favorites. When you do that and you go back, you won't find it anymore. Here's a few things to look out for when sculpting in Blender 2.8. Keep in mind, some of these things might be different for you if you're using the beta or stable version. For example, you can't really sculpt more than one object like you can in Blender 2.79. Now, I'm pretty sure they'll change that later on, but basically this means that if you're sculpting the mask, you're going to have to go out of it, go to the face, and then switch back to sculpt mode. In Blender 2.79, you can just click on one object or the other and continue sculpting. Now, the other thing that you should keep an eye out for is maximizing the screen. The hotkey changed for that. So before it was shift space, now it is control space. And there you go. You can view your sculpt in one big window. Next is the wireframe. Now, the reason I want to talk about the wireframe is because it can be quite helpful when sculpting with dynamic topology to see the density of the mesh, especially if your mesh is smoothed out like this one. So to do so, you can hit the Z button and you'll notice that there are a lot of changes over here. Now, the toggle X-ray is quite useful for retopology, but what we're looking for over here is the wireframe on the left. When you click it, you're going to notice that you don't see all of the vertices. And for dynamic topology, you should be able to see all of it so that you can really know how dense your mesh is in which parts. So to do so, you can go to overlays over here, go to wireframe and go from 0.5 to one. And now you can see all of the vertices. In Blender 2.8, some of the hotkeys changed and I'm not only talking about sculpting. Now, I know a lot of you will not be happy about these changes. You know, you're used to a certain way of doing things and I get that, but the Blender developers won't do these changes unless they improve your workflow. Otherwise, it's just more work for them, which makes no sense. So I do advise you to actually learn all of these changes and they're not a lot really, you get used to them real fast. But in the case where you really want to go with Blender 2.79 and earlier versions of hotkeys, you can always go to edit mode, user preferences, pull it down 
and change an input from Blender default to Blender 2.7x, save the user settings and you'll be using the older hotkeys. Also keep in mind that tutorial creators such as myself, we will be using the default one, so the Blender 2.8 hotkeys. So if you're going to be watching tutorials and you're using the other one over here, you might get lost a bit. Okay, so that pretty much sums it up for this video, but before you go, I'm gonna answer some questions you've been asking me about Blender 2.8 and the course that I have on sculpting. So first things first, uh, you asked me if there's a, an improvement with the performance of Blender 2.8. So when I sculpted Batman, at least, you know, with the alpha version that I was using, I didn't notice any real improvements with the performance. I've heard of some improvement with you know blender performance in general but didn't seem to affect the sculpting area no real changes there in fact there has been some slowdown while sculpting depending on what i'm doing so for example when i'm sculpting with a shape key on the object or with an armature applied that kind of stuff there was some serious lagging but you know that's to be expected i was working with the alpha version it might already be fixed by the time you're watching this video maybe you're working with the beta or the stable version but as for the tools, the tools are the same. That's a bit too bad. I wish, you know, maybe Blender 2.8 got some real updates when it came to sculpting, but it didn't, not when it comes to tools or performance. Here's the thing, Blender 2.8 is just the first of its version. So there's Blender 2.8.1, 2, and more, and you know, Blender will probably be getting updates as time goes, but their focus was not on sculpting, that's why. However, the performance, uh, not performance, but the viewport, you know, the, the cavity, uh, the new matte caps, all these kind of stuff, don't underestimate how that affects your workflow and your productivity and your character creation. It might seem like it's just for the pretty looks, but it's not. You know, one, you see your uh, objects better, you see your character better. Two, it motivates you. It has a psychological effect on you when it looks better on the viewport while you're sculpting. It did motivate me to create more uh, sculpts, more characters, and that kind of stuff. So there is that. As for the sculpting course that I have on Gumroad, you guys have been asking me if I will update it. So yes, the answer is I will definitely update the course over there, and I'll also update it here on the channel. So I'll make a free tutorial uh, when you know the stable version comes comes out and make a proper one just from A to Z again so that you guys you know get everything basically so don't worry about it and if you want to watch the trailer of the course if you've never gotten it before I'll add the link in the description below I got the trailer where some of the content for the sculpting course specifically that course uh, it exists on the channel and some of the content is exclusive so make sure you watch that trailer before you even decide getting it but don't worry if you have it already then the blender 2.8 update that I'm going to do will be free you'll just have to download it and that'll be it okay now that sums it up for the video today is actually my birthday and I don't know why I'm working and I have a excruciating neck pain uh, since two weeks actually I'm gonna see a doctor real soon because it's not going away which made recording this video very very difficult because you know I had to do a lot of takes because since I was in pain I, I just couldn't concentrate and get it in the short amount of takes but anyways that sums it up that's about it for this video and since it's my birthday I expect a like in the video I expect a share in the video and I expect you to comment below I'm just kidding but seriously comment below I'll see you guys soon Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more awesome character sculpts and art related videos. You can also check out my store for full courses on character sculpting, texturing, materials, brushes and more. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video then you will definitely enjoy the next one.